And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold, and ice must high came floating by, as green as emerald. And through the drifts, the snowy cliffs did send. How do you go about maintaining a structure over 30 minutes or, or, or so? The ancient mariner is a, is really um, uh, an unfolding narrative. Mm -hmm. And so the, the great aim was to maintain the tension. Yes, yes. Um, and of course, with a, with a text, as you know, as a composer, um, th there is a structure already. Yeah, you have yeah. the structure of the verse. And uh, my, my response to poetry has always been very respectful. Yeah, although, of course, you've, yes. needed, you've needed to edit it to a certain yes, extent. Yes, I had, just to, cut, to, yeah. I had yeah. to cut it, yes. I thought there was... Um, I toyed with the idea of setting the whole poem. Yeah. But in the end, I, I, it would have been too much. And I think it's, it's, it's more, more effective as a piece um, because a lot of the later parts of the poem have been cut. So the, the drama is there. Yes, yes, indeed, the, the central And, shape, uh, yeah. and um, certainly the, the best no known parts of the poem are there because there are there are there are some so many famous yeah. passages yes it has that feel of a structure becoming apparent as it as it mm. goes it feels very organic the way that one section morphs into a next one yes. and it, it to a to someone listening to it for the first time it might seem like a single stretch but actually it's constantly changing is that the yes. idea and i think actually when you say sections i think you're right that um i thought it would be better for for the for the audience, if if I could um, perhaps use some material for a short time, mm -hmm. so so you get mm. several verses with the same melodic yes. material, yes. and then a change. Yeah. So there are sections, and there are there are changes of character. Yeah. So it doesn't it's it's not, um, and in fact there's a there's a section towards the end where you get you get um, quite a large passage with the same musical material, almost yeah. like a hymn. Yes. And it's been like a, almost like a folk song before, yes. and then the bit you're referring to at the end, when he reaches land, it, it becomes almost like a hymn again. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think the, the crucial thing about the piece was that um, it's such a well-known poem, and the, the, there's quite a lot of it. So, but the, crucially, I think it's, it would be impossible to set the ancient mariner without acknowledging the ballad yeah, character yes, of the piece. Yes. And so I thought, well, what, how can I manage that? And so... Um, there seemed to be no choice but to set the opening in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. In a, in a, almost like a folk song. Yes, and with so, a drone. And so I found it, yes. I, I, it's deliberately diatonic at the beginning. Yeah. But it's diatonic, it, it uses notes that, um, although part of a diatonic scale, are also part of a chromatic yeah. modal scale. So I knew that at, at any moment I could... You, you can leap could, left I could, or right, I, can't I could, you? Yeah. I could, yes, yeah, slip through a gap in the hedge, yes, as I always yes. say, <laughs> and do something more chromatic, more colourful. Yeah. Um, but the, the 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 ballad style, I think, was was um, something I embraced. But it, it also yeah. seemed inevitable given the character of the poem. Well, can I ask you also a little bit more about colour? Because um, yeah. the the instrumentation you have here, we've mentioned strings, we mentioned the drone at the yeah. beginning, and then the, st the strings are there. But then you also have. Um, the piano, and you also have the French horn. Uh, how, how did you go about using, incorporating them? Because th those two last instruments are not by any means playing all the time. They're just little drops of colour here and there. How did you go about incorporating them? When I discussed uh, the instrumentation with Morris Millwood, who commissioned the piece, I think there was an idea that the horn might represent a character yeah. yes. or, or represent an aspect of the poem. And, uh, and so from the beginning, I, I, I thought of um, this as an ensemble of different colors. Yeah. So I wasn't, it, I wasn't writing chamber music for, for seven players. Yes, yes. Um, and I have, uh, there are passages, for example, where, where the water snakes appear, where I just use the two violins mm. against the baritone. And uh, the horn doesn't appear for some time. Yeah. So the horn appears where um, the supernatural element yeah. comes into the piece and the wonderful it's it's i think it's fortuitous that the the 
the first horn note occurs with the word copper. Yes, yes So that's we right. have copper and the horn comes in, <laughs> brass, horn. Uh, and then the piano also has, um, is, is really adding dramatic touches. Yeah. So it's sort of, it, it, it's, it seems to um, make its point very precisely. Yeah. There are, there are yeah. times when it's accompanying the voice mm. um, in a very fluid way, yes. but otherwise it's punctuating yes. the, the musical texture. And I suppose the strings bear the strain yes, yes. of the accompaniment. But not uh, always as a string quartet, because sometimes there's just two or yes. three of them, as you mentioned. And, sometimes, and, yes. and of course the drone, yeah. the, the string players can play Drones, yes, <laughs> and um, and of course, as soon as I, when I had the idea of beginning um, with a ballad style uh, line for, for the soloist, um, the drone seemed the obvious. Yeah. Yes. That, I've already it. mentioned Der Leiermann from the, the Schubert Winterizer as this uh, person churning out this. And I've, I have a feeling I'm, I've discovered what song the Leiermann is singing. Well, the Hurdy Gurdy <laughs> may be that I've written a concerto for Hurdy Gurdy and percussion, it. yes. Brilliant. So, so um, I know the Hurdy Gurdy. Yeah. And um, yes, and drones, anyway, drones have always been very important to me. Mm. Um, and it was. Um, um, I became interested in Indian music um, ah, when, as a teenager. So. So I think drones, um, it, was, it was a pleasure for me to work with the drone. Yes, yes. And then to move the drone. <laughs> exactly, as you say, being able to slip through that hedge again. Yes, slip through yeah, the yeah, hedge, yeah, yes. yes. But I think if it, there was certainly scope, I mean, in this piece, to um, indulge in the sort of mobile modal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I'm, I'm really very interested indeed in modal harmony. and. Yeah. and, uh, and can I ask you, in terms of, uh, of this particular ensemble, the mm. Berber Contemporary Music Group, and also writing for me specifically, is there something about this band of people that, um, that inspired you in particular? Well, I'm writing for friends. Yeah. I'm writing for friends. And obviously, um, uh, I have to say that, that um, without you, this piece would not exist. You know, this, this, the, the, that, that uh, it was when... Morris and I heard you at um, a concert in Leamington. Yes, that the idea yes. was hatched. Oh, right. Uh, so, yes, so, yes. Uh, so the piece has always been written with your voice uh -huh. very much in mind and your, your ability to dramatize, uh, to, 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 to bring character to, yeah. to poetry. Well, you've written me the perfect platform, to be, well, to be fair. Well, to be, so, to to be yeah. the, the ancient mariner. Yeah. I mean, the only, the only thing I do feel sometimes is that you might have done a better job yourself. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but, I, 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 uh, but one thing I am sure about is that I wouldn't have sung uh, your setting as well as you would have done. So, it's, so. A, it's a curious thing that, that it, from one composer to another that it, obviously people write in such different ways, yeah. and I, I'm often bewildered, I see a piece of music, I think, well, I would never have written that. No. I would not have come up with this idea. And, and I think the, what I've learned in the performance of it is the magic that the spell it casts on people. I think I would have labored, I, who knows, labored off in some way, and two and a half hours later, still be in verse six or something, and with all, all sorts of different things going on. There's something about this sweep that you have mm. over this arc of half an hour that is totally hypnotic. And it's, it's, it has such a, a wonderful power in performance on, on people. I seem to have found the right text. Mm, yes. And yet it's the last thing I would have thought of doing. Oh, sleep, it is a gentle thing, beloved from pole to pole. To Mary, Queen, the praise be given. She sent the gentle sleep from heaven that slid into my soul.